Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to Facts and Two Cents. I hope you are having a great day today wherever you are and uh, enjoying this day. Yes, I know there are stuff that just dropped. Yes, I know there's new stuff about Kate and all that stuff. We'll get to that in a bit. But uh, before we get to that, because we've dedicated, what, two, three episodes, whatever it is, about with all of that mess that's going on in Shutter Island. But our faves were out last night, and so my focus and my priority is our faves. I'm sorry, I'm petty and I'm biased today, and um, I, I'm leaning into it. Our faves is what I'm focused on today. And uh, yes, we'll get to all of that drama in the on Shutter Island with Kate um, later. So, but first and foremost, hello to all of our friends in the chat. Hello, you guys. I'm so happy. I know, again, this is one of those uh, <laughs> impromptu pedal crazy schedule. I have a little bit of a window. Let's hang with my friends kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, uh, and so I am happy for any, all of you that are here and hopefully more of our friends will join. But Hmm, Faye Petgrave. I don't think I've ever seen you here before. Well, welcome. I'm happy you're here. Uh, but Church Nelly, our awesome moderator, is here hanging out with us from South Carolina. Hello, fabulous Friday to you, Church Nelly, and all of our wonderful South Carolina squaddies. Hello, hello, hello. And uh, Church Nelly has kindly put all of the uh, important links in, uh, in the chat. So if you need any of these links, uh, that supports the podcast, please uh, just click on the link on Church Nelly's post. I appreciate it, Church Nelly. Thank you so very much. Kim Peaches is here. Hello, Kim Peaches. Uh, yep, we'll get to all that stuff late in a bit. We will focus on our faves first. Dolores is here. Hello, Dolores. How are you? Um, uh, Church Nelly has kindly put in stuff from our faves as well. Lemonada and Sussex.com, uh, where you can get all the wonderful information about our faves there. So thank you. You, Church Nelly. Um, ooh, more people are here that I have not seen before. Nanon Fa. Okay. Yes. Hello, Nanon. Yes, again, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, we see it. Lady P is here. Hello. Um, let's see who else is here. Connie is here, hanging out with us from uh, Switzerland. Hello, Connie. Black Queen is here. Hello, Black Queen, our awesome moderator. Uh, Olive is here. Hello, guys. Karen M., our awesome moderator, is here. Hello, Karen and Andrea and all of our other... Um, oh, we... No, Thandu. Hello, my friend. Hanging out with us in South, uh, South Africa. So we have an international... Uh, community here. So uh, we're, we're, we're just hitting all continents here. <laughs> yeah, I think we have a couple more to go, but you know, hopefully they'll join us as well. So, and we'll say hello to uh, all of our fr other friends as we go along. But I am so happy you guys are here. We can chat uh, for a bit and, uh, you know, about all the good, the bad, the drama, the, the in-between and all the stuff that's been happening in the last, say, 24 hours. So, yes. So, our phase were out and about in uh, L.A. actually yesterday, last night. They were at the SoFi uh, Museum. Uh, actually, SoFi Stadium, they have um, the Kinsey Collection is there. And I remember us talking about this a little while ago. I don't even remember why I brought it up. I think the Sussexes did something with it, and that's what got me talking about it. They may have mentioned it before. I, I didn't get a chance to go back to it. It was like, I know I talked about this before about the Kingsley Collection at SoFi Stadium. So, but anyway, they had a, an event last night and Harry and Meghan were there. And um, as you can see, Sean Robinson, who is an entertainment reporter, I think she might be with Entertainment Tonight or one of those. I don't remember. There are quite a few of these entertainment uh, television shows. And she is a, a longtime reporter um, for one of them. And so she was at this event. And Harry and Meghan, if I know them as well as I do, when they do stuff like this, they may have been part of help or been a uh, part of producing this event, uh, which was, a, I guess, a talk back event. And um, there are other celebrities there. As you can see in the pictures there, Megan took photos with a couple of people that I don't really know who they are because I kind of saw this late and as I was about to um, bring this all in here. And so, but I do know Beyonce's mama, <laughs> that's her in the bottom there with dude in the tan, the tan suit. So I don't know who that dude is either. So, um, 
later today I'll go investigating to figure out his name is Eduardo Brasileiro. He's the one that posted this in his um uh his Instagram reel and with uh him and Megan. Oh, let me actually move my little banner there so you can see Megan, him and Meg. Yep, there we go. Him and Megan up there. Don't know who the dude is right at the bottom of there with the black jacket. Don't know who he is with, uh, posing with Megan, but I will find out later. Um, but that is definitely Eduardo posing with Beyonce's mama right there. And uh, Sean Robinson, as you can see in the middle, she also posed that you can see there are people on the stage. It says, great discussion last night, supported by Archwell organization. And she tagged someone with a fake Archwell account on Instagram, apparently. And uh, as we know, Archwell does not have an Instagram account, but that's fine. It says, and the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. So um, in some way, uh, Harry and Meghan are supporting either financially or in curating this talk um, about African-American history um, last night. But it's, again, when they are participating in something and when they're doing stuff like this, you know that they don't just show up to event. They're usually a part of curating it. They're usually a part of producing it. We saw it in New York when they did the mental health um, initiative. We just saw it in Texas, the same thing with South by Southwest. They... Um, they, along with the 19th, work together in producing that whole event, um, that their whole talk back, their whole uh, panel, they were part of producing it. So that's kind of how they roll. They don't just show up for things. They just, they're always a part of putting it together and invite people to come. So which is, that's the power position to be in. So wonderful. I mean, I saw a little clip of Megan's, um, her well speech thing i didn't we don't you know we didn't get the whole clip so i didn't hear what harry said but we know that they both have as you can see at the mic um one with megan with the mic in his mouth and one with harry's at the top there so it would be interesting um to see if we are able to get the full speech from both of them and so thank you to mimi roche and i'm going to move my banner at from the bottom there so i can see the others chris baron smith who posted this on um on x i know that there are other people that posted it as well but these are the two uh, accounts that i got these pictures from so thank you guys for posting it because i would not have known it was there so i appreciate it but again megan and harry doing and I always think of them as roiling the way they need to royal. This is how roiling, roiling needs to happen. <laughs> and they are showing the world how to royal. So there you go. If you're going to be royal, do it like Harry and Meghan. <laughs> you know, don't just show up for an event that other people put, you know, put on, but be a part of curating or supporting or funding or whatever, that you are having an active role in whatever you do, whatever is being presented. So it's very, very cool and um, I'm very happy to see them out and about not engaging in any of the nonsense on Shutter Island, but just going about doing their work and minding their own business. And we hope that they just continue and stay minding their business. So a little bit about the Kinsey Museum, uh, the Kinsey Collection. It says uh, Kinsey African-American Art and History Collection. The Kinsey African-American Art and His History Collection is the inspired work of Bernard and Shirley Kinsey and their son Khalil. And it's considered one of the largest and most comprehensive of its kind, curated by Khalil Kinsey and historian Larry Earle. The, exhibi uh, the exhibition focuses on the lives and accomplishments from the 16th century through the years of slavery and emancipation to the civil rights movement and modern day. And so that is the fam the Kinsey family there at bottom right. And so that's uh, Bernard and Shirley and their son Khalil, who are basically has given us the... Uh, Kinsey Collection. So if you're in California or if you're going to California, just go by SoFi Stadium and you can also participate, at least go and check out the museum. You can see just one of the art piece at the bottom there. And I like this quote by James Baldwin that's right there. They actually write together. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. It says, I am what time circumstances history have made me, I've have made of me certainly, but I am also much more than that. So Are We All by James Baldwin. So yeah, I love that. So yeah, absolutely cool. I'm happy Harry and Meghan um, had a chance to do it. And um, 
Oh, <laughs> I accidentally pulled this one in there too. I think my uh, slides got a bit messed up there. But uh, Glazia, and which it seemed like it's a new magazine on on uh, X. I, I hadn't seen it before, but I thought they had a cool little blurb about it. So I thought, oh, well, this is interesting. Um, it says, uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle visit the Kinsey Collection art uh, exec exhibition. Their visit underscores a commitment to raising awareness of African-American history and art while also advocating for cultural inclusivity and education. And um, it's and the the are uh, the article says you know Harry and Meghan's attendance at Kinsey Collection exhib exhibition sparks global interest. Obviously, whenever Harry and Meghan does something, the global audience is interested in that thing. And so this is a little blurb they write um, they wrote about in their article. It says more than just a display of art, Kinsey Collection serves as a beacon of hope aiming to bridge cultural divides, dispel stereotypes, and empower underserved, underserved youth through increased awareness of African-American contribution to American history. Their multifaceted approach includes traveling museum exhibitions, educational materials, and specialized programs designed to enhance academic success and foster inclusivity. With their collaboration extended to educational institutions and state departments nationwide, the Kinsey Collection is at the forefront of shaping African-American history uh, curricula for K-12 students across the country. And I love this. I absolutely love this because especially kids, I mean, you know, especially I, I teach kids and, I, and one of the things that is so important is them knowing, um, one, where they come from and, and also, two, the incredible accomplishments of African Americans gone who have gone by and and who have accomplished those things with so much less than they have now and so when kids see like wow they could do all those things with so much less than we have now then there is nothing I can't accomplish so I think this kind this kind of education is is so needed and I'm so happy that they're doing it so and it's so Harry and Meghan to support something like this so it's really great to see them out and about so it's like yeah you go our faves doing what they do best and again, roiling the way you need to royal. So <laughs> I absolutely love that. So yeah, hopefully we get more photos or at least get a video of what they um what they did and 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 what they said. And so if they if we do get it, then I'll post it on our community page. I won't put it on here because I learned yesterday that um one of one of the other Sussex friendly channel was demonetized and she's no longer on uh, YouTube. And I had no idea until I was listening to her, one of her podcasts yesterday. I was like, what? So yeah, I just, yeah. So I will just post it on our community page. You can watch it over there. So if we get a video from her, so very, very exciting from our faves. And um, Yes, we will get to Shutter Island mess in a bit, but we're focusing on my faves right now. <laughs> we'll get to that mess in a later. Um, one of the things that's been happening, and of course, is there's this just, I, you know, it's weird because a squatty pointed it out and I was like, you know what? She is so right. She is absolutely right. There's something weird going on in Shutter Island and uh, apart from the other weird stuff that we're going to talk about in a second, but we there is this thing going on that you see when you see a pattern of things happening. One of the things that is happening is this push now for the UK to have the Invictus Games come back to the UK. Of course, we know the first one was at the um, was at the you know in the UK, and then. The la especially the last few, the UK government, the royals, they, I mean, it might not as well not have existed the last couple of games because they have paid no attention and completely disregarded their veterans and the games completely. And so it just, so it's been a little bit strange watching them push for a games that literally their press tried to destroy and the government and the royals who are supposed to be the head of the uh, of the military completely ignore their veterans. And so all of a sudden in the last couple of months, this strange push to get the games to come back to the UK. And so 
uh, we saw, we talked about Johnny Mercer the other day. He was, he wrote, you know, they did an article with him talking about how much, you know, what the games mean to him and how important the game is and that they're going to put in this bid for the games. And of course, we as squaddies were like, no, <laughs> you people are the worst. You don't, your, your country is toxic. There is no reason why veterans need to put up with the toxicity in the UK and especially how you treat veterans, especially how you treat the, the founder of the Invictus Games. And plus your country is not safe for him and his family anyway. And so that, you know, we didn't hear anything about it for a few weeks. Then this popped up yesterday. One, you see Johnny Mercer there at the bottom for BBC Bre Breakfast. He was on BBC Breakfast yesterday talking about, you know, getting the games back and being excited about bringing the games back to the to the UK and all of this stuff. And, and as you can see at the top there, BBC News, British bid launched to host the Invictus Games. So not only are they now talking about it, they have launched their bid to get the games. The government has launched a bid to host the 2027 Invictus Games in Birmingham during a pitch held at the NEC on Thursday. The 26 million pound bid is being made through the Office of Veterans Affairs with the final decision over the whole city to be made by the Invictus Games Foundation. Thousands of wounded, injured, and sick servicemen and women have competed in the game since it began in 20, 2014. Minister of Veterans Affairs Johnny Mercer said, the Office of Veterans Affairs is proudly backing a bid to bring the Invictus Games to Britain in 2027. The announcement of the £26 million put, uh, puts the UK another step closer to being the global leader in veteran recovery and demonstrates their this government's commitment to our ex-servicemen and women who sacrifice so much for all of us in the line of duty. I'm sorry, Johnny, but your government are the worst. <laughs> and I know, you know, Johnny is a, he's a vet. So, you know, I, I, I don't question his heart and we remember him in, uh, at, in Dusseldorf, hanging out with Harry. They were, he was sitting with Harry and Meghan and all of them. They are vets. I don't question his heart at all that he would want it there. He is British and, you know, he's a vet, of course. I question the government's motive and I question the royal's motive for wanting this games there. And so it's just just weird thing. I'm like, y'all don't care about your veterans. You didn't even want to lay a wreath at the Senator for Harry, a veteran of 10 years and two tours of duty. You're going to want to spend 26 million pounds in a game that you have not shown any, any inclination that you care about these veterans at all in the last two games. And yet you all of a sudden now it's like, oh, we care about our veterans. We want to honor them. We are committed to them. Really? When? <laughs> Even Robert Jobson the other day was commenting when he was talking about uh, Prince Harry and the Invictus Games, he even, I mean, he doesn't even like Harry. Well, because Harry has taken away his ability to write Harry at 40 and sort of make money off a of Harry game, but that's another story. But even he was commenting how awful the UK treats its veterans. He was coming, it's like, we don't, he, because he was commenting how different the US treats its veterans and how they respect and they honor and take care of their veterans. I mean, in the UK still, the US still needs to do more. But in comparison to how, what they do in the UK, it's like he was talking about that and he is British. And so I'm like, well, if Robert Jobson is calling y'all out for the horrible way you treat your veterans, uh, this doesn't make any sense. So it's just, it's really, really like, hmm, one of those things that make you go, hmm, what is behind all this? And in light of that, there is the Commonwealth Games that they should have been, fo the UK should be focusing on that doesn't have a home right now. Back in 2023 in July, it says British de Britain declines to save Commonwealth Games because they were trying to have Australia do it. And Australia was like, oh, no, we don't want to do this. This is not doesn't make any money and nobody cares about this. Then Victoria, Canada, they were like, uh, yeah, no, we don't want anything to do with this. Let the UK hold set. The UK, they declined to save it. In July, it says London's Britain will not ride straight to the rescue of the Commonwealth Games, throwing the owners back on Australia. <laughs> Poor Australia, like, why? To sort out the crisis caused by the Victorian government's shock decision to pull out of hosting. 
The British government said it was a matter for the organizers to find a solution for the 2026 games and a successful 2022 whole city, Birmingham ruled out stepping in to save the day. <laughs> Nobody was this. So what happened? They couldn't get Australia to do it. They couldn't get uh, Canada to do it. UK are like, oh no, I know this is about propping up our monarchy and all, but no, we're not coming to the rescue. So what do they do? They try to wrangle Malaysia. Poor Malaysia doesn't have anything else to do with its money, but to get it to prop up some, you know, to prop up some monarchy. Malaysia today is like new blow for the Commonwealth Games as Malaysia rejects offer to host in 2026. Lack of time to prepare deters Malaysia from hosting. Decision raised possibility that the games may not take place. Malaysia has rejected an offer to host the 2026 Games because it's uncertainty over costs, the insufficient funding being offered. It is um, its government said on Friday in a major setback for the quadrennial multi-sports event. Nobody cares about the Commonwealth Games. No one cares about these colonial things that have, you know, basically years past its sell-by date. I mean, get rid of these games. But again, why the UK passing on the Commonwealth Games, which is really responsible for, and all of a sudden is all up in Invictus's business. Now, if you're a squatty like us, we're like, oh no, we're going to South Africa. I mean, South Korea, South Korea, Poland, or the US, not the UK, <laughs> anywhere but the UK <laughs> right about now. So I'm hoping that, you know, the Invictus Game Foundation says a big no, you know, although they are British and you're like, they might be like, okay, maybe we should come back home, whatever. But I'm really rooting for South Korea to get these games or Washington. Because again, why are the, the UK not funding their Commonwealth Games, but are all of a sudden all up in games for of people that they don't care about? What is up with that? And so not only that, I mean, things that make you go, hmm, all the drama with the Sussexes on the you know, royal website, and you know that they play with these things to give the press some stupid story to write about with all the, the, the games. There's really silly and really childish games they pull with the royal website. And then all of a sudden, now we're getting, you know, the British press were attacking the Sussexes with their new website and saying all manner of evil against this website. And all of a sudden, the, the royal family now is linking to the Sussex's website. And it's like, huh. so all the games you've been playing with this website, all to give the, your tabloid press stupid stories to write, to you know write something negative about the Sussexes. And all of a sudden you have, uh, you know, <laughs> they're linked to their website. Okay, so that's another thing that it's kind of like you see these things and you're like, what is going on with these? Like, what what is the deal with all of this stuff? And, you know, it could be nothing. But I, when I see patterns, that's, those are just things that made me go, hmm, what is going on here? You know, and not, and not only that, with all the things that's going on again with their press, including the BBC and all the, the negativity that they still spew out today about the Sussexes. For no, no reason whatsoever. I mean, Suits is on Netflix. Everybody got Netflix or Peacock if you're in the U.S. Everybody got, Pe well, I don't know. I don't have TV, but just about everybody and their brother have Netflix. And for some inexplicable reason, BBC, who is in the pocket of the royal family, acquires all nine seasons of Suits. And you're like, well, why though? <laughs> Why? I mean, yes, you could want to be able to dip into the money. I mean, Suits has been the number one TV show all of last year, and then it's still, what, number seven this year. And worldwide, it's just been blowing everything out of the water, and they could just be wanting to get in on the drama. So what do they do? They lease it all night, <laughs> all night seasons of Suits. And it's just like, why? So you got, you know, the Invictus and all of a sudden they're linking to the Sussexes and now they're buying Megan's show all nine seasons when it's on Netflix and nobody, you know, why? <laughs>
And so, I mean, so, I mean, things that make you go, hmm, what's going on here? Is this an attempt to lure the Sussexes back? You know, let's let's pretend that we care. Let's pretend like, oh, you know, yes, the, the, the tabloids are still being the tabloids, but let's pretend that we care. Let's let's all of a sudden care about the things that you know that they're a part of. And so it just makes you go, hmm, what are y'all trying to pull? <laughs> and we know at least one person does like. <laughs> like I ran into the street yesterday or post yesterday. I was like, I had to laugh because <laughs> Dan Wooten, who has been, obviously been kicked off um, GB News and he's doing his own thing now. And he, at least one person is not feeling it. It's like, why the heck is the BBC just spent hundreds of thousands of our t a TV license fee to buy mega box drama suits for iPlayer, even though it's over a decade old and already on Netflix? I never agree with Dan Wooten, but I have to agree here. Why? <laughs> More propaganda for the Sussexes, I imagine. A despicable waste of money. I can imagine people in the UK feeling the same way. Again, why? And it's just like, okay. So whatever their reasoning is, um, it's like, it's sort of like to sweeten up Harry and Meghan in some way. It's just like either that or... The royal family need to associate with the Sussexes. They need two people who are actually royaling the way they need to royal. They need two people who are actually minding their business and actually doing work that is of impact. You cannot say that for the royal family right now. You cannot say that people who are getting over 350 million pounds of taxpayer money, you cannot say that about them. And they need to associate, they need that association. And so it just, <laughs> it's very interesting. I was like, hmm, I, in, in, you know, at least part of this, I agree with that. It's like, well, why? Why are you spending money when it's already on Netflix? And so, yeah, so something is up with that. And, but I think part of it is they need the Sussexes because again, the Sussexes is doing what the royal family need to be doing. and. They are not getting taxpayer funds. They are doing and being a lot more effective than the people who are getting taxpayer money to do the work. It just, yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. And talking about Shutter Island, we come to this. So just before I came on, yes, I don't know, a lot of you in the chat were talking about this. Yes, Kate Middleton has finally decided, oh, let me put my face on camera and, uh, you know, <laughs> And uh, talk about what's going on, according to her, according to her, that she had a major surgery and then discovered, I guess, while she was healing or something, that she has cancer. And look, if this is the case, if this is true and that she does have cancer, look, I don't wish that on anyone. Too many people have, I mean, even among us here have either, you know, in remission, who have had family died from cancer, who are battling cancer. I've had friends pass away from cancer. Um, thank God it's, you know, we don't have that in my family, but I've had friends. One of my very best friends has been battling cancer for as long as I've known her. And it's been by the grace of God that she's been in a remission for this many years. And so I definitely, I... <laughs> I don't think anybody would wish this on anybody. And so if this is the case where she said, you know, that she said and also the case with uh, King Charles, then I wish her a speedy recovery. I mean, you know, whatever the treatment is, I hope it works. I hope that, you know, that they're able to whatever it is that they're able to cut it out. So that way, you know, it could prolong her life for as long. Because again, she is a mother of three young children. You don't wish this kind of thing on, you know, when, especially with children, you're trying to raise your children and then you're dealing with this and then they have to live with the trauma of this. And also knowing that, you know, if, if it's the case that their grandfather has this. So you don't kind you don't wish this kind of thing on anyway. Too many people's lives have been destroyed by cancer. And so I wish her, if this is the case, I wish her a speedy recovery. Because I I, I mean, yeah. Um and that all said, it is I, I feel angry because I want to believe her. 
I want to believe that people wouldn't lie about these things. I want to believe that people wouldn't play on other people's emotions for their own selfish gain. I want to believe that people would never do something like this. But I can't believe her. I'm like, I'm sitting here and I want to believe and I want to believe it's true. But these people just lie and they lie and they lie and they lie and they lie. And I'm like, I'm looking at this person that I want to believe. And and part of me is like, you want it. But then, you know, it's like, again, you think, well, it's cancer. So if she's lying, then maybe she doesn't have cancer. Then maybe it's a good thing. But she's a liar. She's a liar. The whole Kensington, but the whole monarchy, they just lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. And I can't believe anything they say. Because if she is, as she says, she's going through chemo and all of that stuff. Who was the person that was skipping in that video a few days ago? Who was the person in that car a few days ago? Who was the person in that picture a few days ago? And so for me, it's just like, I can't. That's why it's like, you know what? I got to focus on my faith today. If this is the case that she is suffering from this, I wish her well. But I just, it just really is irritating because of all the lies that these people have told. I can't believe a word she says. Do I believe someone will sit there and look you're in the camera, look in the camera and look at, basically look in your eyes because the camera focus, uh, functions as the eyes of the people that she's looking at and lie? Yes, I believe she would. Enough people, especially in the last few months, have looked and sat on television and looked directly in the camera at the, the worldwide audience and lied to their teeth, including Kensington Palace, although they didn't sit in front of a camera, but... They have been lying and lying and lying and lying and lying. I can't believe any of this. And then on top of that, it's just like, oh, wait, King Charles went to the hospital and did a uh, prostate thing and then discovery's cancer. And Kate Middleton went and had surgery and now discovered she has cancer. And it's all just very suspicious. It's all very suspicious. Because again, why the fake, why the, the, the photo in the car? Why the fake um, photo of Mother's Day photo? Why the fake, I mean, who it is that was skipping out of that store carrying a heavy bag? And it's like every single day when a lie doesn't work, they come up with another lie. And I feel like they're just reaching for bigger and bigger and bigger lies. And I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong so badly. I want to be wrong that she wouldn't lie. But part of me want to be right because then she maybe she doesn't have cancer and then she would live long for her kids. It just, it makes me angry that I'm even like have this in my mind. And then to watch her, them, you know, we've talked about this. We'll get to this in a second. Try to destroy photographers because of the lies that they told try to destroy people's livelihoods, most likely try to destroy people in that hospital that they were in, claiming that, oh, people were trying to access their record, which is something that happened, supposedly happened months ago, which there is no clear like someone actually breached that. But it's all in an effort to make her look like a victim and they would destroy people's lives. And you see all of those things. And I'm like, I just, I can't believe anything. I, I, just, I literally can't believe any of this. And so it just like, I, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I just got to wish you well, leave whatever it is and focus on my faith. That's why I'm like, you know what? I know what was coming in. I'm going to focus on my faith first and then we'll get to this. But for me, it's a sickening thing where, you know, and then you have the British press, the press that is in bed with her and the royal family touting all the lies that they have been putting out. Like, you know, again, those photos, they've been the one promoting the video. They swore up and down. How are you doing chemotherapy and be skipping out of that place where you are? You are just had surgery, abdominal surgery, getting treatment for chemo and all of that stuff because of cancer. And yet you're able to walk the way she was walking, practically skipping out of that place with a heavy bag of grocery. I mean, again, <laughs> none of this makes any sense. None of this makes any sense at all. And I feel like they have 
teamed up with the press, their press, to lie to people. And so I just like, you know what? Unless I have verifiable proof, I believe nothing. <laughs> I believe nothing that comes out of that palace. Nothing at all. Because obviously the person we saw in the video is not this person that's sitting in this photo that is in this video. That is not her. Maybe the thinness, yes, that could be it. You know, if you, you know, whatever. She lost weight. She definitely looked like she lost weight. Yeah, but she doesn't look like the person that was in the video at all. <laughs> nor the person in the car, nor the person in the photo. And it's just like, I am like... I just, I, I don't believe her. And I hate that I don't believe someone who's sitting here saying that she has cancer. I hate that I can't believe, but I'm like, unless I have verifiable proof, I'm sorry. I will not be believing you. Unless you present evidence of it. And this is where we are. That's why they were, you know, the, the, pre the photo agencies are like, no, you're like North Korea right now. We're going to treat anything you give us like North Korea or, the, you know, Iran, or I would say Israel and the US, the US government, because it's all propaganda and you don't believe anything they say because they just lie. And so unless I have verifiable evidence, I'm, I'm going to give this one a pass, but I wish her well. Look, and again, I want to be, I, I would gladly, gladly apologize if I'm wrong. I would gladly, because I want to be wrong that you wouldn't lie. But I'm sorry. I just, I'm not, yeah, I don't believe it. I don't believe what she, any, a word she says. So unbelievable. But again, that said, there are too many people suffering with this that are, you know, it, cancer has destroyed so many people's lives that it just, it, it and again, some of our own here, have been going through this and I and have having to suffer through it and, and you know in different stages of it. And so it just for me, it if this is a lie, which I believe it is, if it, if this is a lie, it just it's so egregious that I just ugh. I hate that I you know that I I don't trust humanity, but I I think because I've I've seen so many lies in the, especially the last few months. I have lost faith in humanity that we wouldn't lie about stuff like this. There's, these are things that are supposed to be sacred. You don't lie about stuff like this. But I just, I feel like I, yeah, I, and I hate to say because it's, it's so cold and harsh and, but it's just like, I, yeah. So anyway, I'm just going to leave Kate alone. If I'm wrong, which I hope I am, I wish her well. I don't wish her any harm. I, you know, again, who would, you know, I wish her well. I hope they're able to get the cancer out. If, if that's the case, I hope that she's able to make a full recovery. But as I said, when this whole mess started in January, don't expect Kate Middleton until 2025. <laughs> I said it back then. I knew, <laughs> I was just like, she ain't coming back right now. So this whole now cancer diagnosis, don't expect her for Easter even though that was the narrative yesterday. And then the narrative yesterday was, oh, she has started back working and she is doing her early year stuff. So she is back, you know, doing stuff. And all of a sudden, in one day, the whole narrative changed of, of like, oh, she is having chemotherapy right now and she's taking time away. Please respect their privacy, taking time away to heal. And again, it's just like, you know, <laughs> it just, yeah. It is hard for me to, yeah. <laughs> and then the whole of like, oh, her humanity. I'm like, where are a lot of these people who are really screaming it for, in, uh, you know, for us to consider her humanity, which I, I mean, I have no problem considering her humanity. It's the lies that I have a problem with is the, the lies and the people who for seven years have not spoken up when Megan talked about when Kate was a part of bullying Megan out of the uh, of the royal institution, and apparently she was the one with you know rep, um, what is it? Recollections may vary when Megan sat there and told the world about suicidal ideations. She was part of this. Nobody cared about Megan's humanity. Nobody cared. Well, now I can say nobody 
But all of those people who are now screaming about, oh, what about Kate? She's a human being, whatever. Yes, she is. And we should be concerned about humanity. But where was the same sentiment for Megan? Why were you speaking up for the seven years Megan have been? To this day, she's suffering it. Where was the same attitude? Where was the same energy for Megan's humanity? And that's why a lot of people are like, you know what, girl, yeah. <laughs> it just, again, you know, I wish her well, but yeah, I'm in my pass on her and that. So um, I know you guys have a lot of things to say about this. So I'm going to jump in the chat for a minute and just see what you guys are saying. Um J Gerance, hello Gerance. Gerance says, so you mean to tell me her parents, her sister who went on vacation didn't run to her bedside? Exactly. Pippa was on vacation for like, oh, I don't know, a week or something, enjoying herself in the sun while she was supposedly, you know, recover. It, all of those things make no sense, right? It just, or I mean, you could say, well, she was trying to just, you know, get a break and trying to just, uh, you know, get her mind together, whatever. So she went off on vacation, and took the paparazzi with her to document her bathing suits every day. And so you see stuff like that, you're like, uh, really? Manny Rambo says, so who was that in the car with her mom? It's hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. So, um, um, Felish Babe, ooh, Felish Babe says, Yasmin, when I saw the video and uh, that was exactly my thought, the same Ben still cosplaying even when she's supposed to have cancer. Yeah, it's just a cosplay of Megan, Megan and Harry sitting out there in their bench in their yard. This is the, exactly what this is. Exactly what this is. And people talk about, you know, and yes, you can be like, okay, well, this is major news, whatever. Just when we were talking about Megan and Harry out in California, if this was something, you know, this is how the, the reverse is. Megan and Harry's news just came out that they're out in California, whatever. At the same time, Kensington Palace drops that cake, you know. And you can be like, okay, well, this is more important, whatever. But if it was reverse, even if it's something talking about cancer, what the British press would have been saying, like, oh, Megan, you know, why didn't she choose a different time to make her announcement? It just, it's very interesting. <laughs> K.A. says, lie after lie, the grandkids photo, the Franken Mother's Day photo, the kid, the car photo, the market photo and video. She has a track record of lying. They all do. They all do. And this whole thing, I can't get over the same thing. It's like her and Charles, the same day, announcing they're going to the hospital, then they're having surgery, then, you know, they left the hospital at the same time, and now they both discover they have cancer. I mean, it just, you, <laughs> it's just like, wait a minute. At what point do you say there is something very strange and maybe not true here? It just, uh, you know. Uh, Maverick saying what? Uh, now they're saying Megan and oh gosh, of course, <laughs> of course. I mean, yeah. What else? Harry and Megan are just you know they are that <laughs> they are that powerful. They can give someone cancer. Unbelievable. Um. Uh. Let's see. Adorable says I don't believe anything coming from KP. So who was in the farm? I, exactly. Who was there? Who was that person skipping out of that place? Um, who was editing photos? <laughs> Is that for sympathy? I don't believe Kate. And that's the thing. I've always believed this whole thing was a sympathy thing that they thought, I, I'm assuming they thought this, you know, nobody would, they, nobody would really get on this. They, they didn't expect the attention. They probably thought they can just get away with a couple of months of Kate, you know, just laying low, whatever it is that was causing that. They, you know, they probably thought, and now every day it seemed like they're trying to throw everything at the wall to see what will stick so that people would believe and, you know, fall under and believe their lies. And it's just like, I'm sorry, every single day you're saying something different or you're putting out something different where the press is swearing that that's true. And now it's just like, no, honey, you've lied enough times. I don't believe that. <laughs> Black Queen says, uh, okay, uh, Karen, I'm with you. It's a fraud. I, yeah, it, it's hard to not believe it's a fraud. It's hard to not believe. Janet says the family is a uh, lied. Uh, they could talk about this at the end of, they could talk about this at the end of December. I do believe 
I do believe anyone or anything that comes out, oh, it's probably I don't believe anything that comes out of their mouth. They want attention. That's what it all seems to be. I think, you know, at the beginning when this all started, I, I've said it from then. It's just like the two racist royals looking for sympathy and attention. They want sympathy. They don't want to deal with racism. They don't want to deal with all of this. And people could be like, Puddle, how could you be talking about it? I'm sorry. It's there. It's what I'm thinking. It's what is on there. I'm just being honest. I can't pretend to believe any any of this stuff. I can't pretend. Um, even with something as serious as cancer, I can't pretend I believe it. And so from the, back then, I was like, this looks like a play for sympathy so that they don't have to deal with racism. And I think they've been shocked at the amount of attention this has gotten because the world does not allow them to get away with whatever it is they're hiding. And now every day it's like something different. Let's try to make the public believe something different. And it's almost like they forgot the lie they told the day before. And so let's jump onto something else. And it's just like, what? So anyways, uh, let's see. Cynthia Ashton says, uh, hi, Pedal, hi, Pedal. Uh, let Kay keep sitting in silence to maintain her privacy. Her privacy out the door all of a sudden, peace. <laughs> I know. Now she wants privacy. You know, remember when Meghan and Harry didn't even ask for privacy and then all of this, oh, Harry and Meghan are demanding privacy thing. All of a sudden with Kate and William, especially now Kate, they understand what privacy means. And now everybody's like, give her her privacy. Get well, where was the same attitude and where was the same sentiment for Meghan? Where was the same energy about giving Meghan her privacy? Yeah, bullied her when she was pregnant, bullied her when she, you know, into having a miscarriage, bullied her when she had her second child and they're continuing to bully her. Where was this energy? Where was this energy to leave this woman alone so she can, you know, for her mental health sake and for her children? Where was this energy? H9 says they have cried wolf too many times. That's why you can't believe her. Exactly. Exactly. Um... Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chichnay says, KP is betting the cancer diagnosis. Stop questions, trolling, and getting sympathy and pity um, and much attention. Well, that's the thing. There's this, you know, and even I have said it, you know, at times too, that about conspiracy theories and all the things that has happened. But a lot of the things are not really conspiracy theory. And um, there was a, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna put a link to, the two links actually, to this, uh, I think she was like a crisis manager, a PR crisis manager person. And I, I remember, I, I think Christopher Boozy also retweeted her, this video of her talking about this specific thing. And I think she is absolutely right. And I totally agree with her that this is not conspiracy theory. People aren't just making up stuff about Kate. Uh, well, a few <laughs> stuff out of nowhere. But a lot of the things people are talking about are things that were brought up by their own tabloid reporters. Like we talk about the whole thing with Rose Hendry is because Dan Wooten and Richard Eden are the ones who wrote about it. And the internet took what they said at their word and went with it. So it didn't come from social media bullying. So that whole narrative isn't conspiracy theory. It came from them. And so people are questioning, naturally questioning about it. The same thing with what has happened with Kate from the time this whole started in January. It's been again, lie after lie after lie. And people know when they're being lied to and you're keeping stuff from people and you're lying. And then you're doing these fuzzy photos and fake photos and all of that stuff. People will naturally question. It is not conspiracy theory to question when you think you are being lied to. When you know that your people are withholding information from you, you know that they are in bed with the British press and they're all lying and colluding and you know it, it is, it is everyone's right to question it. The question is, why aren't the British press questioning the royal family? Why aren't they demanding answers? They should be the ones demanding. People on social media shouldn't be the ones doing the job for the reporters. They're the ones that should be asking those very difficult questions of Ken's in the past and not accepting their lies. But instead, they are palace PR and refuse to question. So in the absence of real people, real reporters asking those tough questions of the palace and demanding answers, in the absence of that people being actual journalists, 
You'll have people on social media be like, well, you're not going to give me the, what I'm looking for. I'm going to ask those questions. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to put my feelings out there and my theory about what's happening. So this is not social media's fault. This is Kensington Palace's fault. This is William and Kate's fault. And their sycophantic British press. This is not conspiracy theory. This is people rightly questioning stuff that this should have been this should have been questions put to the palace by credible reporters who are not doing their job and as we've seen especially with tiktok and x we have better reporters who are your everyday keyboard warriors who are asking tough questions than the reporters who should be who literally is getting paid to do this job they're not doing their job so in the absence of that people are asking legitimate questions it is not conspiracy theory and then people are calling out the majority of things people are doing is calling out the hypocrisy the hypocrisy in the oh leave kate alone give her her privacy whatever again where is that where was that and where is that energy for megan why have you spent the last seven years dehumanizing megan yet it's been, what, a few weeks of people asking, rightly asking credible questions about what is going on with Kensington Palace. All of a sudden it's, oh, think about and consider her humanity. She has young children. I'm sorry, Megan's children are younger than Kate's children. Where is the energy to consider Megan's humanity and her children's humanity and her children's security? Kate Middleton has the world at her feet. She has a whole press pack. She has security. Right? She has all kinds of maids and, and all kinds of staff working for her. So she is completely cocooned. Where is it? Where is your consideration for Megan, though? The one that y'all bullied out of the country. <laughs> Even as she is thousands of miles away, especially those in the British press, the same ones who are claiming keep, uh, you know, save uh, and protect Kate are the same ones continually to this day bullying Harry and Meghan. So yeah, this whole conspiracy theory, that now that's just a throw up. There, people are asking legitimate questions and they have every right to because the so-called journalists in the UK especially refuse to do their job. Why? Because they're in bed with the royal family. They do the bidding of the royal family because they make money off of the royal family. And in return, they the royal family get good press. It's a symbiotic relationship. Which is a complete disservice to the people and especially to the people of the UK that are paying over 345 million pounds to this family who are literally there doing nothing and are making zero impact in the world. So it just, yeah. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> uh, Anne Louise says, I wonder if Obama spoke to the UK government and told them to get this debacle with Kate sorted for the sake of the country's reputation. Who knows? I have no idea. I know, yeah, he was at uh, number 10. He was visiting Rishi Sunak, but I have no idea what is why he was there. They didn't say why. I was thinking maybe it has something to do with Palestine. I, I have no idea. Don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's see. MZ Lifestyle says, why all the lot lie upon lie? The stage pictures, they have to bring Megan and Harry's kids in. I know, right? They tried to destroy reporters. I mean, photographers. I, yeah, it just, none of, oh, none of this stuff is just like unbelievable. Um, let's see. What else you guys have to say? I'm just gonna scroll all the way down. Black Queen, aw, thank you so much. Thank you for your donation. I appreciate it, Black Queen, our awesome moderator. Black Queen says, but remember the demons say that Megan's baby are Nirvana real? So they would not show any sympathy and empathy, only their white lives, only their white lives matter. I'm not sure I understand the first part of it, but uh, yeah, I mean, they've been behaving like, yeah, only wife, uh, wh white lives matter because they definitely have not shown any care for the black or brown ones in so many ways. So yeah, it just, uh, thank you, Black Queen. <laughs> um, let's see. Venzola says, does anyone think the bench was photoshopped? <laughs> From Harriet Beckett's garden, I wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> Let's just say I would not be shocked. 
I mean, if they would, if they pulled off that fake video and was trying, I mean, even TMZ to the, um, have, had now backed away from that being real. You know, if they did that whole fake photo thing and they found a second photo that's been faked and uh, manipulated and then pull off the whole fake video, yeah, I'm telling you. That could, you know, at this point, it's like, is that an AI person there? I wouldn't be shy. I wouldn't blame someone for thinking that's just an AI version of what they, you know, of Kate that's sitting there. I wouldn't blame someone because, again, this is what happens when you lose credibility. Nobody believes anything. You have no credibility at all. You have no integrity. So it's not on anyone else to believe you because it's just like you have shown yourself to be not trustworthy. So, yeah. Um, Sharon says uh, Obama was there about his foundation. The royal family is not that important. Well, there you go. So thank you, Sharon. I had no idea. I just saw a video of him going there, but didn't know. I didn't hear anything after about why he was there. So no idea. So good to know uh, Obama's foundation are doing great things. They are also producing great movies that, again, we've talked about that has won numerous awards. So yeah, so they are they're doing good. So, well, good for Obama. <laughs> Lorna says the bench. <laughs> I know, right? Of course. Of course. Take on Megan's the bench. Of course. <laughs> you know, it just cosplay. Even then, even now, cosplaying. So, yeah. Um... Oh, um, Black Me says Nirvana is autocorrect, supposed to be uh, not real. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Black Queen. <laughs> I know the autocorrect is like, you have to pay attention sometimes because it does things and then you press uh, send and you're like, wait, that's not what I meant to say. So thank you, Black Queen. <laughs> oh, and you, another watch. Oh, thank you for your other uh, donation. Thank you so much for always supporting. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Our awesome moderator, Black Queen. Um, let's see. Uh, Little Max says, doesn't Megan have the same sweater and the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I just you know i i don't i don't know maybe i you know i tend to not remember megan's clothes until i see it so who knows maybe she does would i be shocked no of course not uh, of course not i mean hello <laughs> it just this whole thing again the same thing coming out right when Megan, you know, right when the world is learning about Megan and Harry's um, John, um museum uh, thing they did yesterday. It's, you know, it's, it's all of it timed, all of it timed. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? Let's see. Marilyn Matthews says, according to the British po a British podcast, our Brits accept that the firm and the British government lie to them and Americans should not be concerned. Sorry, but we don't like it when people lie because then it just, you know, we like to try be able to think that we could trust people. That's why we call out lies, especially when you are a head of state. Look, People lie all the time. You can't, you can't, you know, be monitoring people and their lives. Like, look, you want to lie, lie, that's in you. But when you are the head of state, it is a problem. It's, it's the same reason why Donald Trump lying in the White House is a problem. Why? Because they have power to affect people's lives. And, you know, it's the same reason I've been calling out just our pr president right now and his administration lies in Palestine. Why? Because people are being killed because of their lies. The same reason I've been calling out people that I, I mean, I love Hillary Clinton. I've loved her. And I was, I mean, I cried when she didn't win. And I watched her on TV lie. <laughs> and I've had to call it out and see the pang of like, oh my gosh, I really wanted this woman to be president. And she's sitting there lying, looking in the I, in the camera, lying to the American people about Palestine. I've watched them all lie. And I'm like, it matters why? Because those lies are taking people's lives. 
There are 30,000 people dead in Palestine because of the lies of Israel, the American government, the British government, and a lot of the Western government that support Israel. Lies, when you are in this position, it affects people. If, you, if you're if you not affecting anybody and you're just some regular old folks that just want to lie for yourself, look, lying is not, you don't want to be lying, but I can't be, you know, be bothered with you if you want to lie. Lie, that's your thing. But when you are in a position of power and you lie, it affects other people that are, be, you know, so-called that you know are under you basically the royal family is a head of state we have commonwealth countries that they are supposedly head of when you could sit here and lie to people then it affects the people that you are supposed to be head of and so for me that's why it matters that's why I call it out because that's why it's like you see so many people have been protesting around the world because we have been being lied to about what is going on and people are just becoming, including myself, becoming aware of the lies we've been told for all this time. We have to call it out. We cannot allow this to be norm. It has to not be normal that people are lying to you and it be okay. I am concerned because her lies just almost destroyed Miss Ann Harriman's career. It almost destroyed Chris um, Alterton's career. Her lies has, has far-reaching effects. Three people in that hospital may lose their job because, you know, because, which I think is, you know, a lie to make her look like a victim. People get affected by their lies. And so for me, that is why we should all be concerned and all be calling and not accept that. Even from people that we love, even from people that we, you know, even like I was even against Barack Obama. We we're just talking about Barack Obama. The same thing with Palestine. When I saw him on TV blame shifting and then blaming TikTok for what's, you know, what the narrative that's been going on around Israel, I was like, wait a minute, I trusted you as a president. And then I find out all the stuff that was happening while he was, I was like, you all were sitting there lying to people. Because when you lie to people, especially in that position, people die. And we should never accept that, I'm sorry. Air on, the, air on the side of just blurting out the truth because then when you lie, you have to cover up all that. And that's why they're in the mess where they're in because they're lying and lying and lying and have to cover up their lies all the time and they keep falling on their faces. And that's why it's a mess. Sorry, I can't accept that. So yeah, it just, yeah, no. I, this this narrative of Americans shouldn't be, that, that should never ever be our, our position in anything. I don't care who is the person that's lying, call it out and not accept it. Um, yeah, so anyways, moving on from this, I'm just getting irritated about this stuff. <laughs> Let's move on from Kate and her mess. And again, if I'm wrong, I am, look, I gladly apologize if I'm wrong. But at this moment, I can't believe anything I, I see about that. I just, I just can't. So yeah, um, yeah, uh, let's see. One more on this, and then we move on. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm trying not to. <laughs> Church Nelly, I'm trying not to. <laughs> it's just like a, I get a little passionate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I get a little passionate about these things because it's just like, no, we can't do that. Don't accept people lying to you. I mean... I think I think why I feel so strongly about this is like you don't lie and you do stuff like this to people that you respect. And there's a gross lack of dis lack of respect for the people because it's like when you respect someone, you you know, you look at them and you think of them as worthy of being told the truth, even if it's the truth that hurts. You're worthy of being told the truth. When people start lying to you, it means they have no respect for you at all. And so that for me, I can't tolerate it, especially when you are paying and your, your tax dollars are going to these people and they're lying in your face, both. It. They're taking your money and then have a complete lack of respect for you. No, that's no, that's not acceptable to me at all. And it shouldn't be acceptable to any of us. So, yeah, I hope that people don't have this attitude of like, well, it's OK if they like. No, absolutely not. 
Absolutely, absolutely not. So anyways, moving on. Um, we talked about um, this yesterday. Was it yet? No, the, two days ago? Wait, when did we do this? Two days ago, I think. Yeah, we talked about Misson and Clive Alderton because the press obviously uh, tried to drag Misson into this whole Kate and her Photoshop mess and tried to drag Misson in with um, baby lilies when Megan was pregnant with baby Lily. And then, of course, Misson uh, uh, posted his photo with the metadata and all of that stuff, debunking that whole nonsense and demanding an apology. A couple of the news outlets changed their article. I don't think the Sun ever did because, um, according to Misson, they never apologized and they didn't change the article. And I said at the time, Misson need to sue because you need to set a precedent. You need to set that out there at that moment that no you will not tolerate that and so yeah um two days ago uh, they did the same thing to um to um chris alterton and with um archie's christening photo and um that um getty apparently for some reason flagged his photo of all the photos that chris alderton has there they flagged the one with Megan and Megan's child, and Megan and Harry's child, and it's very, for me, very, very sinister that the the both photos that they went after, um, whether it's the press lying about Misson's um, baby Lily's photo, pre pregnancy photo, Megan's pregnancy photo with Lily, and also Archie's christening photo, those are the two they went after. And it's like, it's very, for me, sinister that, that those are the two of all the photos that Alton has on Getty. Those are the two. That's what they went after. And of course, you know, he stood up and, and, and really slammed it down. And Getty had to change it, take off whatever note, the editor's note they had in there. It's like, no, this, this photo was not altered in any way. It was not manipulated in any way. They had to take off their note. But I said at the time, look, they need to get together and file a lawsuit because this is not going to stop. This is when people, especially in the UK, they do not, I mean, you know, it's just like someone would say there, people just accept that the royals will lie. They accept the, the tabloids will just lie and destroy people's lives. They don't investigate. They don't fight back, whatever. They just accept it. And my thing is you cannot accept stuff like that because it will damage your career. They will not stop. They will not stop until you fight back. And if you don't stop, people who may want your services, they're not, especially in the UK, they do not go and investigate to see what is true. The majority of them, no matter what their position, will most likely take what the tabloids especially say as gospel. And it will ruin your career. And I always believe that. So we didn't hear anything about um, what was going on with Messon because everyone was, you know, tweeting back at him, including myself. You must file a lawsuit, sue them, so that they know that you're not just going to sit back and and say anything. So after the whole thing with Clyde Alton, he pulled it down. What happened? Messon still is still happening to Messon. So yesterday he posted it says, so this is the raw, the DNG file of my image. It is extraordinary that photographers are having to do this. What is worse is that YouTube and uh, YouTube creators are allowing these pages that publish so much hate to stay up on their platform. They are easy to find and should be easy to remove. I will be speaking to the senior team at YouTube directly about this. This is a trust and safety issue. As you can see, the file in the file, nothing has been manipulated beyond the color grade. The crazy accusations insidious. This is the last time I'm doing this. Image metadata is attached. That's the metadata at the bottom there, telling you everything about the photo. And there is a link to the actual raw or the DNG file. Also folks, also, folks that understand photography will know the difference between edited image and a manipulated image. In regards to defamation, my team is looking at every legal recourse. This has to stop. And this is what I think Misson should have done in the minute this whole thing happened with the Daily Mail when they lied and posted that thing about um, Megan's pregnancy photo. This is what you do in the right at that moment that your legal team right at the moment sent out a letter before action. 
And so I'm glad that Misan is finally like, he realizes like, wait a minute, it's not just the tabloids are going to be posting that, but these trolls on this platform are going to be taking that and making all kinds of videos and stuff claiming. And so they went from Ashi's photos to this photo claiming that it was manipulated. And this is why he's like, no, well, now I'm going to talk to YouTube and his create YouTube creators. And I'm going to, we're looking at legal recourse because it's not going to stop. And this is why I think photographers, especially those who've worked with the Royal family should team up and do this. Because again, they will destroy your life. And again, in favor of or in service to protecting, quote unquote, protecting the royal family. It is disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting that these photographers who have built their life and built a career and feed their family on this stuff are now in question why? Because the royal family choose to lie. Because Kate Middleton and William chose to lie. And now they're upset that people are like questioning them and questioning what, you know, what is going on and questioning and not believing this wherever they say they are. And so it's just, it's really sick. So I'm glad Misan is like, you know, finally is like, okay, we're going to take legal action. So I look forward to see what, you know, how this end up and what legal action that he's going to take. Um, you know, and how they're going to do it and if they're going to go after specific channels on um, uh, on YouTube who have been posting this stuff. I'm like, I didn't, I am afraid to even go check because I am like, I don't even want to see it. But Misan has. And so we know they're, we know they're there because the, the ton of them that are there attacking Megan on a daily basis, lie after lie after lie. And so, yeah, it just, it's very, very sick. So, so talking about, uh, <laughs> yes, you know, the British press's narrative, one of their narrative, this is from Camilla Tomini, talking about how the, the palace obsession to, with control has come back to haunt them. And this whole thing is because, happened because the palace won control because they want to be able to take their own pictures instead of hiring professional photographers. Taking your own pictures has nothing to do with manipulating a photo. People take their picture. I mean, I'm a photographer. I take pictures all the time. I take photos. I do photos for video, um, for um, music videos. I did. I do photos for films. I do photos all the time. And I don't sit there and manipulate photos. <laughs> I don't put people in a photo that wasn't there when I'm shooting it. <laughs> I don't add things that are the, that weren't there onto a photo. If I'm, you know, what I mean, it just. I mean, if you want to be creative and do those things on your own time and for your own in Instagram, for your own creativity and change colors and what all that's fine. You could change colors, or you can like Miss Sun. Miss Sun works in black and white. He changed um, color to black and white, whatever. But when you're, you know, literally putting people into a photo that wasn't there when you photographed it or changing people's hair or changing their head and swapping out people's faces. That's a problem. That is manipulation. Editing a photo because there's this misconception like, oh, you Photoshop, then that's wrong. No, Photoshopping or editing a photo could simply mean something as simple as cropping a photo. It could simply mean, um, um, you know, changing a photo from black and white to, I'm um, sorry, from color to black and white or back and forth, whatever. You know, you can uh, highlight a certain part and um, to make color. Like I do creative stuff like that because I love to do creative stuff with with photos. When you're doing it, yeah, especially when, for example, this, when you are putting that out there as an official photo that you know is going to go into history, that is not the time to be playing with pulling people that weren't in a photo, putting them, photoshopping them into a photo. That is manipulating a photo or swapping people's faces. You don't do that. You don't even do that when you're creative. <laughs> that is wrong. Even on Instagram, people get called out for stuff like that. You know, so it's just, it's crazy <laughs> that they can think like, oh, it's because it's DIY. No, you could do DIY and just not manipulate your photo. They're beautiful kids. They're beautiful people. There's no reason to be manipulating a photo. You have all the things around you to, you know, to create a beautiful photo. You don't have to do nothing to it. 
there's no reason to manipulate a photo. So it's just nothing to do with DIY, if it's DIY or not. Take a photo with your camera and post it. Whatever. It's real. You don't need to manipulate it. So unbelievable. And, you know, it's one of the things, again, coming back to the old oh, layoff, Kate and all of that stuff and, and uh, you know, understanding and, and she is um, she's going through a lot and she's a mom and all that stuff, layoff, Kate. One of the things, you know, to realize is that even the people that are screaming at everyone to lay off Kate, that Kate Middleton literally is working for those people, like the sun. And we remember this from last year, royal approval. I am so proud to back the sun's fabulous baby bank on us campaign. It is a vital cause, says Kate Middleton. She is proud to work with a tabloid that has been destroying her brother-in-law's life, who he is suing who has blagged and hacked and all of the things that Harry is suing them for. And now we know how a black hacking his phone since he was what, nine years old. This is the, this is who she's in bed with. And here, of course, the son who she's in bed with is like, lay off Kate and stop bullying over edited pic. Hello. The same people that were attacking Megan. Hello, Jeremy Clarkson and others. All their articles, all those Dan Wooten articles attacking the Sussexes, all those Pierce Morgan articles from the Sun attacking the Sussexes. But Megan doesn't work for the Sun, so therefore not laying her off, but laying off of her. But of course, lay off Kate because why? Kate works for them. Unbelievable. Uh, Linda Max says, regarding Miss An's picture, everyone knows grass is not black and white or gray. So it is obvious that either he is used black and white film or he changed the saturation. Glad to have the beautiful colored photo. Yeah, a picture. Yeah. I mean, changing a picture from black and white, especially because if you look at all of Miss An's work, just go on any of his platform, that is the, his format. He works in black and white. And so his pictures are always going to, it's going to be in color and he changes it to black and white. That's how he works. And all of his pictures, no matter who, if it's shooting for Vogue or whomever, all of his pictures in black and white. That is the only thing he works with lights and uh, light, you know, it's either darker or lighter. And that's how he, that's his art form. That is not manipulating a photo. <laughs> but again, manipulating a photo is like, Pulling in tree that wasn't there, like that they were claiming he did, or um, changing it, you know, putting a person or photoshopping a person into a photo, into a scene that they weren't there when you photoshopped it or when you photographed it, or you know, it's uh, you know, someone is at home in their house and then you change the background and then you put it, uh, put them in a fancy place to make it look like. They are on a fancy jet or something. And then you publish that as real, like, oh, yeah, see, I'm on a fancy jet. That is manipulating. <laughs> Changing something from black and white is not manipulating a photo. It's just uh, editing a photo. It's like the same as if you cropped a photo. You crop a certain scene out of a photo. That's just, it's a normal editing process. It's not manipulating a photo. So, um Let's see. And again, it's really sad that these, again, these photographers, these professional photographers who have built their platform and have done such a great work doing it and such hard work, it's so hard to get that kind of career going and to see it now put in question because of lies from the palace. It is just egregious. It is absolutely egregious. So, yeah. Um Kim Peter says, uh, Squatties, I still want more information as to the King's status and Kate. Also, I still can't text Baron on the podcast. Oh, you know what? I'm, um, I'm assuming you, you're you not able to uh, go on in his, his lives um, or be in the live feed. I would say um, undo your, um, like, subscribe and undo the... Um, the bell and then redo it because sometimes it needs, I, I don't know why it happens. Like uh, there was a time I was like, why am I not getting anything from Baron? I realized like, Oh, <laughs> so sometimes I don't know why YouTube does that. So undo it and uh, sort, of, sort of do a little reboot and see if that works. And in the meantime, I will um, send a message to Baron that um, to check and see if there's something about your account that why you're not able to. So yeah, hopefully that works out can peaches. So yeah. Um, Let's see. 
Uh, Japan. Oh, is Japan in the running? I don't remember Japan um, being in the running for the Invictus game. I know South Korea. I could be wrong, but um, I didn't realize Japan. People were saying that Japan got it, and I was like, they didn't announce anything about any team, any country. So I'm not sure who um, is the one that were claiming that Japan got the games. So, but who knows? Uh, let's see. Um. Okay. I think that's it. I do have um, some more stuff for Harry's um, court case, but I think I'm going to talk about that tomorrow because um, I think we've kind of <laughs> had enough of uh, Kate Middleton and her mess. <laughs> so we'll talk about Harry's court case. We'll do that all tomorrow because um, it's a lot, and um, which includes, um, obviously, it's against the sun. And um you know i'm glad that they brought in megan what they did to the sun in um what they did to megan in having um dano i forgot what his name is dano something the american um uh, investigator going in and basically getting megan's phone number and her social security card and so i am glad that harry has now included that whether it will go forward or not i don't know only because he's american it's happened in america megan is american i don't know if it will fly in the british court so but we'll talk about that um hopefully i'll send an email to leslie maybe like leslie could come on and um she can chat with us about that tomorrow but I think that's all for this one. Um, we will chat about that other, all of that stuff in tomorrow's podcast. So uh, let's see a couple more what you guys have to say before we end. Uh, Black Queen says lay off Megan's first. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like lay off Megan and then we'll talk about you and talk about Kate. So yeah. Um, let's see. Joan Hickey says, um, um, obviously the Sun Market video <laughs> was also fake. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> right? Exactly. And that's why, again, it's like you, you all are upset people can't trust. And you're like, well, when you put out fake photos and videos, what do you expect people to do? What do you expect people to do? So, yeah. Hope says, I thought Japan had the 2027 games. Someone, I, I don't know if it's someone on a, a TikTok or YouTube or wherever put out this fake um thing that uh japan had the 2027 games and uh, no <laughs> japan does not uh they didn't put out any they have not made a decision about the games at all so i don't understand why they did that i have no idea even J if japan is even bidding for this i mean again i know washington i know south korea I think Poland as well, and now UK. But I, I don't know who did that because I saw quite a few people in the chat talking about that, that no, Japan has. I'm like, you just have to go on the, um, whenever you see stuff like this, always just go on the, on the, um, the website, go to the um, Invictus Games website, and then you will find that information because that is not the truth. So anyway, I'm just going to skip um, all this. Oh, wait talk about Invictus Games. Um, Invictus Games have, if you are on TikTok, Invictus Games, they're now on TikTok. So <laughs> definitely go over there and give them some support. I am not on TikTok. So I, uh, you know, but if you are, definitely jump over there and give them some love. It says Invictus Game Foundation is now on TikTok. Follow us at We Are Invictus Games on TikTok US for content on the upcoming IG25 games in Canada and all our activities beyond the game. See you there. So if you, again, if you're on TikTok and uh, you know, keep your fingers crossed that the US doesn't ban, if you're in the US, the US does not ban TikTok because they are trying to cover up for Israel and in their mind, too many people on there are supporting Palestine. Don't let them fool you and tell you that this is about China at all. This is not. It is about uh, the IDF and um, the ADL in the United States wanting to control TikTok and they can't because the majority of the kids there are supporting Palestine overwhelmingly and they cannot control it. So that's what it's about. So fingers crossed, Congress has passed a bill that they can go ahead and ban TikTok in the US. 
it may not pass the Senate, but we'll see. Um, but that's what that's about. Um, also, Invictus Games, I uh, I did this, uh, I posted this, and I talked about this, uh, I think, a few episodes back. They are still hiring. So if you are, uh, you know, if you're into esports and you, you know, in the in the management area and you're looking for a job, uh, Invictus Games, they are hiring an esports manager. So definitely go on their website and uh, apply. And, you know. That would be awesome. So it says application is still open for the new role of esports manager at the IGF, which is the In Invictus Games Foundation. We are looking to further develop esports, furthering the aid, uh, furthering uh, offering to aid the recovery of the international WIS community. A big thank you to Amazon for facilitating this role. So Amazon is going to be paying the salary, I guess. And uh, so, yeah. So again, if you or you know someone who you think this would be a great fit for, definitely pass it on. And great way, go on uh, Invictus Games website and get all the information you need. So hopefully a squatty will get it. That would be awesome. So yeah. Um. So let's see. Um... Karen says, I came off X because X Kate fans are attacking Megan, saying Megan should have this type of, uh, should have this type of, oh, goodness. Of course, of course. <laughs> While at the same time, it's like, please, you should be backing off Megan. Oh, I can't. <laughs> uh, let's see. Black Queen says, but and everyone appreciate your support for the Sussex and humanity. I mean, we're all here, you know, definitely support uh our faves so yeah um oh lisa strain sorry uh lisa strain says in the written statement they did uh they did still lie saying that she was out with her husband yesterday the woman gingerly sitting on the bench was not the same person skipping along the farm <laughs> i know right <laughs> amazing <laughs> Amazing. Uh, let's say. Uh, Terry said they better leave Megan alone. She lie about her, she lie about her health to get sympathy, popularity, and she is not a fake like Kate. It just, yeah. Thank you, uh, Terry. So, but they're not going to. At the same time, they're, you know, they are like, leave Kate alone. They're attacking Megan, who has been minding her business. And I'm glad the Sussexes has taken the stance to mind their own business. So we, you know, love our fave. We're looking forward to what uh, Megan's, um, whatever she has coming out with, excuse me, American Rivera um, Orchard. We look forward to that and look forward to whatever else her and Harry are doing with their foundation. So very exciting. Um, looking forward to our phase. But that's it, guys. Uh, thank you all so much for um, hanging out with me at such short notice. Thank you to our awesome moderators, Lydia, Trish, Nelly, Karen M, Cookies and Cream, Black Weed. You are awesome. And to all of you in the chat and all of you who supported um, financially in the chat, I appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and to all of our Two Cents crew who support on a monthly basis, you you are amazing. Thank you all so much for that. I love you guys. I appreciate you being here. We'll chat more about Harry's court case tomorrow. And yeah, I shall chat with you later. Bye. <laughs>